Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Accounting Information Systems. Today, we are going to focus on the actual design of a procurement cycle data set. Again, we're going to take our UML, our Unified Modeling Language uh, map that we created for this database structure. We, in class, translate that into a table notation format where we um, notated which were the primary keys, which were the other attributes for each one of the classes. We are then going to translate that into a actual database using Microsoft Access so that we can see how we can create the relationships within Access so that we can generate reports. Again, we're using Microsoft Access for purposes of simplicity at this point, we're not using SQL or any other sophisticated database structure. This UML is very simplified. I'm more focused on making sure that you're able to understand how the UML mappings translate into actual table notation um, uh, formatting that can be implemented into a database structure in the future. So let us go ahead and transition over to our UML then. Here is the UML. Uh, that we created for the procurement cycle. Again, we have your R, resources, events, and agents interacting in this procurement cycle specifically for the purpose of transacting purchases and then subsequently paying for those uh, purchases with cash disbursements from our business. Uh, we went through the whole, um, uh, this, all the steps to create these tables based on the UML. And we ended up with a few tables in here. Some of them need to be created as a design of the multiplicities and the relationships uh, complexity. Specifically, we know that we added that stock flow one table or what we, I would call the purchase inventory details, right? That is a table that's gonna have the purchase quantity, the purchase ID and the raw material ID to tell us what was purchased in each one of those purchase transactions. Excuse me. Uh, we also created that participation three, which basically st stands for vendor payments, right? So some vendors may not be paid immediately and some uh, vendors may not be paid at all. And so because of that, we're creating uh, a participation three separate association class, and we're gonna call it vendor payments. You could keep the name as vendor, uh, I'm sorry, participation three as well. Same thing with duality, right? This expresses uh, at what point do we actually pay for our purchases you know, purchases happen at one point, but they're not immediately paid in this design. I understand that sometimes businesses have a um, uh, simplified transaction where the purchase and the payment happen at the same time, such as when we buy from Amazon, from Starbucks, McDonald's, whatever the case might be, right? So in this case, we can call it duality or we're going to call it paid purchases as well, whatever um, happens. And you see some of these... Uh, uh, IDs that are highlighted in, re in, 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 in red are just from our exercise of bringing in the linking of, you know, the primary keys that are plugged in as foreign keys in different tables, but they're not the only ones uh, that I'm looking at. So let's just review one, two, three, four, and then the other ones are tables. One, two, so one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, and those are the five, six, seven tables. Okay, so that's, those are exactly the ones that we plugged in. So having done that, I'm gonna go ahead and start my database. I can start with a blank database and I'm gonna create one that is called first, always in my class, make sure that you use your last name, first name, and then whatever the exercise might be, UML, database, uh, or whatever the exercise require you to name it. All right, immediately when you open Access, uh, it's going to try to default into a table design. I'm going to close out of this so that I can I can have full control of where I'm going. So I go to create and I start with the table design. That way I start with a blank sheet. Remember, we're going to look at each one of these tables. I'm going to start with the raw material ID, which is going to be a short text. My description of that inventory item is also going to be a short text. So by default, we want to make sure that everything is... Uh, short text it. And the other thing that I do like is that the standard unit cost um, that you capitalize the first letter of each word in that phrase so that we understand what that stands for. Uh, that's, you know, just proper formatting. Now, standard unit cost is not going to be short text. That's going to be a currency data type. Then 
I'm going to look at the ones that are underlined and that we define as our primary key. And I'm going to select that on the left side. Notice that I'm looking at the gray box and I'm creating a primary key on that. And then next, I'm going to save it. And this is going to be called the inventory table. And that's it for this one, right? That's pretty simple. We close it out and then we go to the next one. So we're going to look at our cash accounts. And again, those are like accounts, bank accounts, etc. Create table. I'm going to create the table to sign. I'm going to start with the uh, with the actual primary key, which is cash account ID. Again, all the IDs should always be primary keys. Um, and they should be short text in unless it's a number, right? The cash account type would be a short text. Bank name would be a short text as well. We already have the primary key selected. So then I can just save this as my cash table and I can close it. Um, Next, next one is going to be my stock flow one, which is this table right here that was created as an association table. By default, even though I don't have the primary keys from both tables, they're assumed or implied to be in there. So purchase ID and raw material ID both will be my, my, uh, my actual tables. And then I need to have a missing one, one, um, one field here. Apologies. This is the purchase quantity. And... Notice that sometimes I may or may not include the actual name. Um, I may be abbreviating some of this stuff. So just be mindful of that as we do. So I'm going to call it just purchase inventory details for now. And I'm going to create a table to sign. Let me say, well, it's going to ask me to save it. There's no, I guess I can't save it first. So, all right, fine, fine. Purchase ID then. That's a short text. Then raw materials ID. That is going to be a short text. And then I'm going to need a purchase quantity. And that's just going to be a number. In Access, your data types are very simple. Number, text, short, long, memo. Uh, so you don't have to worry about you know uh, some of the actual data structures that you need in, in a computer science. You're going to take a look at that in subsequent software that we're going to be using. Now, this is something you want to pay attention to. So I'm going to put a little beep beep uh, right here. You do want to select both of these items. Remember these two, these two, um, these two different attributes make up a composite primary key. So you need to grab them both. Once you grab them both, you do the primary key. If you happen to do one by mistake, uh, then you got to undo it and select it again. You don't have to press shift. You just press and hold and go to the next one, right? Or you can press one and then press shift and then do the same thing and then do the primary key again this is going to be called stock flow one or purchase inventory details notice that i skipped the actual i don't like to use spaces that's just my preference right and then there it is purchase inventory details all right so which ones of these you keep going like that i'm not going to do the video for all of them but purchase id text date is a date function buyer id and vendor id short text as well Cash disbursement number is, I know it says number, we're going to use a short text on it. Date is a date. And you may not be able to use date as a name. So you may have to add this as purchase date. Why don't we try it real quick just to make sure that I'm not lying to you. Let's do create table design. We're starting with purchase ID. Uh, and that's going to be a short text. Let's just assume this is just date. So I'm going to keep it as date. See, this is a reserve word. So you see that that's creating a problem. So I want to go back and just change that to purchase date. So in Access, these are there certain words that are very similar to some functions and commands that are reserved for the software to use. This is the same as Visual Basic, right? And so because of that, then we might have to change this to purchase date. And we get that. This is cash disbursement date. Uh, what else do we have a date there? It looks like we don't have any other dates. So just be mindful of that. That's going to have to be changed for purposes of our database. So purchase date, and then I need buyer ID. That's short text and vendor ID. And so that's short text. Again, this is our purchases. So I'm going to save this purchase. Oh, it's going to ask me first for my primary key. Okay. So now that I have it, I can do that. All right. Do we want to do another one? Why not? Let's do a cash disbursement. So I'm going to start with the cash disp disbursement number. Let me close this first. So I'm going to go create table design cash disbursement number. Again, this is an ID, so I'm going to keep it at short text. This is a date and time. This is our preference. This is a dollar 
amount. So that is going to be what? Currency, right? So dollar amount is going to be based on currency. And then the cashier ID is going to be short text and the cash account ID. I'm going to make a mistake here on purpose. Well, maybe not yet. If Well, let me just say what would happen. If you were to say this is a number and you try to link it later on, it's going to give you an error that says th there is a data incompatibility that those, those two things cannot be matched. And I'll explain that in the relationships in just a second, right? So if that is the case, then you have to go back, delete the relationship, come back and edit this table to make sure that they both match, that the foreign key and the primary key have the same data type in order for them to be united. You cannot unite or join or link, I should say more specifically, a field name or a field that has a short text as a data type and a number as a data type. Be careful with that. So this is a very typical error that everybody commits, including myself. So just watch out for that as well. So cache disbursements. I like to keep those. I actually like to keep the tables plural. So like purchase should be renamed. As long as it's not open, I can rename it to say purchases, right? So that's plural for my classes. Cash disbursements, inventory, cash. Well, cash can be plural as well, and inventory can be plural. All right, let me pause right there, and um, let me continue doing this on my own, and then I'll post the relationships creation. Thank you. All right, folks, I'm going to show this example of a typical mistake that happens when you save without doing a primary key is going to prompt you to automatically create an ID and the system may create an ID for you. And that's something that I've been asked over the phone or over uh, as a follow up question, right? So we, we got to get rid of this ID uh, for sure. And the only way to get rid of it is to first inactivate the primary key. If you have a primary key, and you try to delete it, it's going to throw an error and said, No, you can't have that because that's uh, a primary. Okay, it just gives you an error. So I guess you could do it either way. But if it has data, I may give you a problem. So you know, I just deleted that by right clicking on the or clicking on that field and then right clicking on it or double click if you have a, a Mac using a portal, and then you can delete the row. Now that I have this, then I can say that the cash disbursement number is indeed my primary key. And now this is fixed. So the cash account ID, the dollar amount is currency, and the cash disbursement, disbursement date is a date and time. So this is good to go. I can save it. And it looks like I have all the tables. Notice that the only one that had the original name is duality. All the rest, I kind of renamed a little bit. All of them are plural. Buyers, cashiers, cash disbursements, details, purchases, vendor payments, and vendors. The only one that was the, the, the actual... Uh, paid purchases. It's really duality. I can rename this if it makes more sense, but I'll keep it as duality so you can see that. I kind of enjoy that. Let me pause this video then. Okay, I'm going to open all of them very quickly in Flash. You can pause it so you can check your work, right? Buyers, cash disbursement. I'm going to show that for a second. Cashiers, duality. Pause if you need to look at it. Inventory, design, um, uh, purchase inventory details. Again, this is one that has two items. Purchases just has one ID. Vendor payment should have two IDs, right? And then vendors. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to close them all. Hope you saw that. And I'm going to go into the next step, which is the database tools. This is where we create the relationships. Again, I'm just going to grab them all. And throw them in the uh, in the in our in our dashboard, and I like to organize this pretty much the same way that we have our UML, right? So let me bring back the UML here very quickly, so you can see the R, E, and the A. So inventory and cash is going to be on the side. So let's look for that cash. Our events are going to be the cash disbursements in the center, and then our purchases in the middle, and then I'm going to have my cashiers at the bottom, vendor and buyer. So we have our vendor in the middle. The duality between vendor payments and purchases is in the middle. I'm sorry, in cash disbursements. And then you have the duality between vendors and cash disbursements between these two. And then we have buyers on the very top. So that kind of makes sense. And then we have the purchase inventory details between inventory and purchase. So this is a little more organized. We rea it. We put it on that REA format, resources, events, and agents, so that it can make more sense in our in our minds. 
And then it keeps us going in the future, right? Like where are the resources, where are the events, and who is participating? So it's the what, the why, and the when, and of course, the who. And this is really, really simple. All you gotta do is make sure that you link all of these according to our diagram. And so you have the purchase ID, which is the primary key that is being connected. So the ones will go to the stars and we're gonna enforce referential integrity. If we did this right and you have a one to many relationship, you'll see it right there, right? So you'll see the one to many relationship recorded right there. So same, same with this, this raw material ID comes to raw materials ID. Again, this has to match. The name doesn't have to be exactly the same. We might have abbreviated something, but as long as it points to the right name. If I use a different field here, then I'm gonna create an issue with the referential integrity. That's what happens a lot of the times. People forget and they start doing uh, primary key to primary key. That's not, the, that's not our intent. Our intent is to have the primary key to the foreign key that matches the purpose. Right, so not primary to primary, but primary to foreign. This is my primary, this is my foreign. Buyer and buyer. Make sure you do that, otherwise you'll throw an error. This is my primary, this is my, for, uh, my foreign key in a different table. This cash disbursement, oh, and I forgot to probably enforce referential integrity here. It worked still. Um, again, this is the cash. The ones go to the stars. So this is the one going to the stars. Cash account ID. Let's see what happens if I do cash disbursement number. Well, it may not create a problem right now, but you will see that it doesn't have the one to many, which is weird because we would have simplified that table in most cases. But once you start doing reports, then you, you can have issues. So this is a very typical mistake, and I almost did it right now. So cash account ID goes to cash account ID. Enforce referential integrity. You should have a one to many based on our diagram. One to many, right? The right side of this equation. And then finally, we're going to go to um, buyer ID. Vendor ID comes to your vendor ID here. Enforce referential integrity. Uh, and then we have cash disbursement number from here back to this. And we're going to enforce referential integrity as well. And then finally, your cashier ID will go to your cashier ID over here, enforcing referential integrity. So let me see. We should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm missing some. Um, so I'm missing buyer to purchase. That's right. Purchase to vendor. So vendor to purchases. Okay. And participation three is this table and it's linked. Participation four is a cashier to cash disbursement. We have this stock flow number two, then we have duality, which is equal to two, and then we have these two tables. Let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and that's it. That's is exactly, we can save it, right? So you're gonna make sure that when you submit this, you uh, are able to show me that you were able to do this diagram, number one. Number two, that you uploaded this database into our assignment and that you completed the, um, the actual PowerPoint or the Google Slides with the proper information here. Uh, and it's okay if you have abbreviations, just stay consistent throughout. And that's it, that's all we gotta do, guys. And then we're gonna start working in more detail with some reports on Monday. Um, thank you once again.